So in this talk, I'm going to consider one subtlety associated with partial derivatives, which is that the value of the partial derivative, is this all here? The value of the partial derivative depends on all the inputs. Okay. What that means is that if I have a function and I diff of multiple variables and I differentiate it with respect to one variable, then the derivative, the partial derivative may depend on all the variables or may depend on the other variables as well. There's a separate video where I've done a simple example of that, but now I want to consider some subtleties associated with this subtlety. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is, is the second order mixed partial and how that quantifies the extent to which this is true. So let's just do an example with a function of two variables. So you have f of x comma y. Okay, and we are interested in taking the partial with respect to x and asking how does this depend on on what both variables yeah but in particular we are interested right now in how, how this depends on on the other variable on y now what's one extreme situation an extreme situation is where it doesn't depend at all on y okay so it's actually independent of y and if that's not true, then that means it does depend on y, which means that if you change y, then the value of this changes. Okay. Now, how would you try to quantify the extent to which this depends on y? What would you use to quantify that? Mix second order mix partial. So you take the second order mix partial. Now, if you haven't seen second order mix partials, you can treat this as sort of a motivation, motivating situation or a motivating uh, setup for that. If you have seen them, this is just like a quick review of that. The, to quantify this by taking the second order mixed partial. What, what mixed partial will that be? F sub x, y. Second order mixed partial and in this case it will be f sub x y of x comma y okay similarly you could consider f sub y of x comma y and you figure out how does this depend on x so the same thing as we have here we we would take what would we take to quantify the extent to which this depends on x? Take the derivative of f sub y with respect to x. So what what's that? F y x f sub y x of x comma y. So these two mixed partials capture the the way in which the first order partials depend on the other variable, the variable which wasn't included. Now what do you know about the relation between these two? Well, they're not always equal, but generally speaking, they are. Okay. So, let's say they are usually equal by, by usually I mean in nice situations. I don't mean in, in random situations, but in the nice situations we have, uh, in nice situations by what? By a result, by Clairaut's theorem. Better than cap, so you can see. In the nice situation basically means you assume some continuity conditions and then you have that they are equal. Which means that that the fact that, that the partial is to one variable depends on the other is sort of symmetric between both. The extent to which f sub x depends on y is is related to the extent to which f sub y depends on x. So and that's a separate topic which we talk about in other videos. For now, I want to consider another aspect of this, which is the situations where the value of the partial derivative doesn't depend on the other input. That's saying the situations where these mixed partials are, are what? Zero. If the, zero, right. If the mix, if the first order partial in one variable doesn't depend on the other, that means that the, that there's no interaction between the things. And so that's saying the mixed partial is zero.
I'll explain that. So I'll, I'll take a simple example for two variables. Suppose I have a function. So by the way, I'm using capital F for the function now, and I'll use little f for 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 something else. So this capital F is plays the role of what little f played a while back. And I'll use little f for a function of one variable and little g for a function of another variable. And assume that f and g are differentiable. What is what is this kind of a function called where you can write it as a sum of functions of each of the variables? Additive separable. Okay, so this is an additively separable function. This is additively separable. Okay, this is additively separable. So, okay. And now I want to show you what happens when you take the we take the first order function. What is it? capital F sub x of x comma y? Little f prime x. What is capital F sub y of x comma y? G prime y. G prime y. Now, what do you notice? Little f prime x doesn't depend on y. y. Okay. So that means that the value of this, value of capital F x at any pair x comma y, just depends on the x coordinate. So this is sort of a counter example. It's in fact the counter example to to the assertion that the mixed part that the sorry, I keep confusing the term. This is a counter example to the assertion that the partial derivative should depend on both inputs because in this case the partial derivative just depends on x. And similarly, f sub y has no dependence on x. on x. And in particular, both f sub x y and f sub y x are equal to what? Yeah. Zero. Okay. Now, I want to expand on this a little bit by taking a function of three variables. Now, things get a little more interesting when you take a function of three variables. Let's take an example. Are we down here? So take little f of three variables and I'll call them x1, x2, x3. So take x2 square minus x1 square x3. Now is this additively separable in terms of all three variables? No. However, it is somewhat separable. So it's separated as a function of x2 and a function of x1 and x3. Right? So x2 is sort of separated out from x1, x3. So if you want, you can sort of partition the set of inputs into two pieces. x2 is one piece and x1, x3 are the other piece. And it is additively separable between these two pieces. Right? So x2 and x1, x3. It's separable. Are we, is all this coming? Yeah. It's separable between these two pieces. So what do you expect should be true? Which par which 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 pairs of variables do you not have any dependency between? Well, there's no dependency between x2 and x1, and there's no dependency between x2 and x3. Right? Let's calculate f sub x2 of x1, x2, x3. What's that? 2x2. Minus anything? No. No. Okay. And this depends only on x2. So even though the function isn't additively separable, in sort of it's it's not completely additively separable it's partially additively separable in terms of this partition of the set and therefore the the derivative with respect to x2 depends only on x2 and not on the other pieces now what would you expect would happen if you take the derivative with respect to x1 well it will well, depend on x3 
x1 and x3 but it's not going to depend on x2 because these are in separate pieces well let's calculate the actual value what is it uh, negative 2 x1 and So in general, additive separability between pieces between pieces is partial additively se separable means that you can have dependencies between variables within a piece, but not between variables in different pieces. Okay, now another thing I want to say is when you look at these kinds of expressions, right? This type of term, x1 square x3 is a term that describes an interaction between the variables x1 and x3. So in some sense, the fact that the mix, that the partial derivative depends on all inputs is sort of captured by the interaction terms. Okay? So terms like this, terms where terms which involve products or maybe more complicated functions that, that entangle the variables with each other, those are the interaction terms. So, so let me just put this. So there's concept of oh, where do I write? So these are interaction terms. So another way of saying that the second order mixed partial is zero. This is the same as saying that the partial in one variable doesn't depend on the other. Is saying that there is no interaction between the variables. Okay? So just here, there is no interaction between x2 and x1. There is no interaction between x2 and x3, but there is an interaction between x1 and x3. Okay, That's why the partials with respect to either with respect to x1 depends on x3. Okay. 